When I made the GLOBE project this last summer, I made a practice 80-sided sphere, which is an isododecahedron, I think is how you say it. And even in the GLOBE project, I made a practice bowl out of half of one of these. And ever since then, I've been wanting to use the triangles to make patterns and make a wood-turned object with patterns in the triangles. And something else I've really been wanting to do is a wood-turned object with a puzzle pattern. And I thought maybe using the triangles as the starting point to make a puzzle pattern would work. What I would need to do is to have the pattern that looks like the tabs to the puzzle be separate from the seams between the triangles. So I've, I've been laying out the pattern on here and it's hard, I'm finding it's hard to see, one, because it's kind of big um, and you, you can't sort of see enough of it. I've kind of come up with a pattern that repeats, but I end up with a triangle where there's two in, in nubbins. <laughs> so they're gonna have to be kind of small so they can fit. But what I'm thinking is maybe what I will do is take the model that I have in the computer, because it's really easy to make one of these spheres, and then map a pattern and just kind of draw a pattern because then I can, I can draw something flat and kind of see the whole pattern at once and then wrap it around the sphere and see what it looks like as a pattern on the, on the curved surface. In making the pattern, I was thinking about what kind of wood I wanted to use for the two different colors. My first thought was to just use walnut and maple, but I felt like I've been using that a lot recently. So I found a piece of cherry that I've had for a while. I think I got this as a bigger batch, and this was a, a small piece from that batch. And I also found a piece of kaya that I think is left over from the kitchen. So I could joint and plane those pieces and get them to a similar thickness so I could start to make the parts for the triangles. I needed to make both the insert pieces and the triangles themselves with the insert cut out. And the way I thought about doing this was to make an insert that runs along one edge of the triangle and brings a tab of the adjacent triangle's wood color into the triangle that has the insert. The tab pattern of the puzzle crosses the seams between the triangles. So I cut out the inserts first. That way I could size the holes that they're going to go into in the triangles. And I can joint and plane the piece of kaya. So I have the cherry inserts cut. So now I cut out the kaya inserts. At this point, I was trying to lay out the inserts so the grain would follow across the seam between the triangles. That's why they're at odd angles in the piece of wood. As the, the wood is sort of a long shape, I can do a section of it and hold that section in place and then stop the router and move the hold downs and do another section of the piece of wood which is a little bit slower, but it means I can use more of the wood and I can use a long shape like this and keep it secure to the table. So now I think I have all the inserts cut and I didn't quite cut them all the way through so I can cut them free on the bandsaw. If I don't cut them all the way through, I can pack them in tighter on the piece of wood and get more use out of the wood. There's still a lot of waste, but at least doing it this way, there's a little bit less. <laughs> now I can start to cut the holes that the inserts will go into. And I did one sort of as a test to see if it would work. I think I recut the outside a couple of times to get it big enough to take the insert. 
then I could cut all the other mortises. <laughs> I guess that's what they are, sort of. So these are laid out, so I will put the insert in, then cut out the triangle. At this point, they look a little more spaced out on the piece of wood. That's because I need room for the triangles. Then I can sand off the extra bit of wood. As these were small and I left that piece fairly thin, this went quickly. I also cut air slots in the long side of the inserts as that side of the insert was going to get cut off anyways. And this will allow air to get out of the mortise. So I realized at about this point that I usually mirror the insert in the computer. Then I, I flip them over and leave what was the bottom on the CNC table facing up. But on these, I thought I would be smart and leave that bottom extra piece of wood really thin and I'd just sand it off and I'd put the pieces in unmirrored. I figured out on this project that there must be a tiny amount of taper in either the router bit or maybe it's a little bit of flex in the router bit as it's cutting so that the, the holes or the inserts or a little bit of both are tapered a tiny, tiny amount. So they don't really go in right side up, <laughs> I discovered. They go in upside down, which didn't matter a whole lot because they were symmetrical, so they still worked, but it meant that my grain pattern that I had so carefully lined up wasn't gonna work because many of the inserts were now flipped and the grain pattern was now flipped. So that whole part of the project didn't really work because I learned something new about how the machine actually makes the holes and the inserts. <laughs> so once I put all the inserts in, in each piece of wood, I can cut the triangles out and I can cut those free on the bandsaw. So I have the piece of Kaya finished and I can start making the triangles out of the piece of cherry and that piece can go on. I use the hold down cutouts in the table to line up the work piece as the cutouts in the table I know are perfectly parallel to the Y axis, axis, axis. <laughs> and I can cut the mortises into the cherry and I can bring over all of the inserts. So these are made out of Kaya, and I can put these in. I think I also cut these mortises slightly bigger, like a thousandth or two one thousandths of an inch bigger, so the pieces fit a little better. And I knew which direction they went in now. Then I could cut the triangles out and finish cutting the triangles out. <laughs> and I can cut up that piece on the bandsaw. The way the jig on the table saw works, that extra bit on the bottom of the triangle gets cut off and doesn't really matter. I do have to sand that face with the insert so it sits flat on the jig. And I have to sand that point on the triangle down so it'll fit in the jig. This part doesn't matter, but I make it look pretty. <laughs> I can move all the triangles to the table saw and cut the angles between the triangles. So with this geometric shape, there's two different triangles and three different angles between them. There's a set of five that make a pentagon and between the pentagons, there's an equilateral triangle. And I can lay everything out flat. I'm doing something with a calculator on my phone and I, f I forget what I was doing. <laughs> then I can get ready to glue the pentagon sections together. I really haven't figured out a better way to do this yet. I tried the first one with tape and then I remembered I had got these little spring clamps that looked useful but I wasn't really sure what I was going to use them for. And they just work on these pentagon sections where I can clamp the corners together with the spring clamps. And this worked better than the tape. I really like this method for doing these. 
So I can do the corners with the spring clamps and then put a weight on top of the center of the pentagon and that holds the joints together. I just let them dry for 10 or 15 minutes and then I can put bigger sections together. So I divided the hemisphere into three sections and I can glue those three sections together. Then as the sides of those sections are starting to get a little bit out of plane or a little bit out of alignment, once those have dried a little bit, I can sand the edges, which kind of messes up the points of the triangles coming together perfectly. It means that seam will be nice and tight. Then I can just glue those seams together. I found between the sides of the triangles, there isn't enough angle for the spring clamps, but at the corners of the triangles, there's just enough of an angle or a difference between the, the planes of wood that I can use the spring clamps. You can see a little dark U shape on one of the triangles here. And I had had a problem where the, the Z axis fell for some reason and the, the collet of the router was riding on the wood. Luckily, I was right there and I could stop it. I'm not sure why it did that, whether something slipped or something was screwed up in the G code, but it only happened once. So. Now that the hemisphere is glued together, I need to make something the lathe can hold on to when I put this on the lathe. I'm going to glue some triangles to the bottom of the hemisphere and this will allow me to make a tenon to go in the chuck on the lathe. A gravity clamp. <laughs> so I can start by putting the bowl on backwards held with the rim and I can make the tenon on the other side of the hemisphere. And that tenon doesn't really need to be solid. It just needs to be something that the lathe chuck can hold on to. And it needs to be about the right size. If it's too small, then the chuck doesn't work. <laughs> then I can put different chuck jaws on and turn the bowl around. Now I can do the main turning. I started with the outside. With a setup like this, it's fairly round to begin with, and it's all the same kind of side grain. So the, the turning's pretty easy. It starts out a little bumpy, and then it gets smoother. If I rotate the bowl gouge and use the side at an angle, I can get a very clean surface. In fact, I can pretty much get away without the scraper on the outside. The inside, I still use the scraper. Then I can do the rim, that's pretty quick, <laughs> and start on the inside. I started by getting the area near the rim done first, as this bowl was going to have fairly thin sides. I think I was a little more afraid of it vibrating a lot, and it turned out not to be too big of an issue. Once I had the shape pretty close, I got the scraper out and I could make the surface on the inside nice and smooth. My skill with the bowl gouge on the inside of the bowl still isn't quite good enough to get a really, really clean surface. So I used the scraper to clean everything up. I find I can run my fingers over the inside and feel where the ridges are. Sometimes I'll even mark with a pencil sort of where the ridges are so I can see them while I'm turning because they kind of disappear when the bowl is spinning. Then I can do a little sanding. I got the inside and the upper section of the outside sanded. Pattern's kind of working. <laughs> it looks pretty. Now that the, the main section of the bowl's done, I can finish up the bottom. So I can turn everything around again and basically just cut off the tenon that I made. I drilled a small hole so the tailstock would have something to go into. 
the triangles I glued on weren't coming to a point at exactly where the tailstock thought the center was. I, I made that hole to give the tailstock sort of an even spot to go. Then it's just a matter of turning off those triangles. I really, really don't want to go too deep. <laughs> Got it pretty good with the bull gouge. Then I scraped a little bit. You can kind of see how the scraper is still cutting right at that top edge of the tool. And I can get the center piece as small as I can with the tailstock in place. Then I can cut off that last little tab, which doesn't quite fit in this tool, but it still worked. Then cut off the, the very last little bit. Now I can sand that bottom section. I've made sort of a flat spot that the bowl can sit on, and it looks good. I can sand that bottom piece and just make that flat spot a little flatter. <laughs> and it seems to work. And you can see what that looks like. It's just a flat spot. <laughs> and I can put finish on. And it turned out really nice. It's not quite what I had expected or was working towards, but it's still very pretty. I did have to use a little wood filler here and there because my triangles didn't go together as perfectly as I'd hoped. I'm still looking for a method to get the triangles glued up nice and tight. I, I think it's my clamping and glue up method that's the problem. I think that the angles on the triangles are correct. I don't want to be too much of a critic, but I was hoping for more of a differentiation between the different puzzle pieces. And I, I, I picked the Cherry and Kaya thinking there'd be more of a color difference, but they're, they're really similar in color. The thing that makes the puzzle pieces read is the green pattern, sort of the texture in the wood instead of the color. And I sort of screwed that up because I had to flip my inserts. I kind of like that it's subtle, but what I had envisioned originally was something with a stronger pattern to it. It still turned out really nice. <laughs>